out of your heart are the issues of life. Mm -hmm. out, of the, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. So whatever you're saying is coming from your heart. And, uh, if you ever want to know what's in somebody's heart, just listen to what they say. You want to know if he loves you? Listen to what he said. You want to know how they feel about you? Listen to what they say. You want to know whether they love God? Listen to what they say. Not how they dance. Listen to what they say. Because what's in your heart is going to come out in your speech, particularly when you're under pressure. Yes. Oh, Lord help me. So if you want to know how somebody really feels about an issue, catch them when they're under pressure and see what they say about it. They tell you how they really feel about you when they're angry. <laughs> That's not my message. A grateful heart. But it's having a grateful heart because if your heart is grateful, then your actions become grateful. A grateful heart will always manifest in an attitude of gratitude. Somebody has a grateful heart, a heart full of thanksgiving. Every time they speak, you're going to know it. Because whether they're in a mountain or in the valley, they're going to be saying, thank you, Lord. Amen. Now watch this now, because you and I have to develop a grateful heart, because we and I got to go through some things in life that's not going to look good most of the time. If you develop a grateful heart, and you can say, thank you, God, in the midst of your trouble, it means that you have accepted, I'm going to teach something here, it means that you have accepted the gift of eternal life. All right. People who complain in trouble have not accepted the gift. Because if you've accepted the gift of eternal life, you know that nothing in your life is by happenstance. So if you accept it, that I'm God's eternal plan, eternal life does not have to do with getting in heaven. It has to do with living in God's eternal plan on earth. It means that you are foreknown and predestined. When we did foreknow, you also did predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son. Whatever you go through is already in function. Remember, we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, Unto good works which he before ordained that we should walk in. Heaven is a wonderful place to be someday. But when Jesus came, he said, The king of heaven is at. <laughs> he said, Heaven has come to the earth. So I need to learn how to find heaven. Amen. I'm in heaven myself. So when we talk about eternal life, things that are eternal are things that when they start, they can't be affected from the outside. When something's eternal, it starts in motion, it's not going to stop until it gets where it's going, but it cannot be affected by nothing from the outside of it. So when you have eternal life, it means that from the time the Spirit spoke, light be, let there be light. God's eternal plan kicked in. And now the middle of that plan was the cross of Calvary when he shifted everything into gear. But when you accept eternal life, you come into God's eternal plan. I'm telling you something. So if you've accepted eternal life, if you accept it that I'm connected to God's eternal plan, so no matter whether I'm on a mountain or in the valley, whether I'm in Gethsemane or Calvary, I can still say, thank you! Yeah. Yeah. Because I understand that enough there, by happenstance, he leads me in the path of rightness for his name's sake. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. All the many of the sons of God, they are led by the spirit of the Lord. So if you get into the trouble, don't mean he didn't take you there. The Bible says that he drove Jesus into the wilderness. He drew each of the eternal spirit and endured the cross. He was with Jesus on the cross. Yeah. Am I teaching you that? So when I get grateful about no matter where I am, it means that I've accepted the gift yes. of eternal life. And I know that he has a good plan for my life. So whether I'm in the darkness of it right then, I know that someday the light is going to come on. Because it's too far towards me of good and not of evil to give me the hope and the future. So I know that it's to bring my life to an expected end. So you may be judging me where I'm at, but since I have eternal life and I'm resting in Christ, I know that some kind of way this thing is going to work out. So I got to have a, an attitude of gratitude, a grateful heart, that even though I might be crying, I'm still grateful. Even though I don't understand what's going on, I'm still grateful. Thank you, Lord, for this experience. Thank you, Lord, for where I'm at right now. Thank you, I have to remain grateful. Why? Because it's a part of his ordained plan for my life. Yes. Am I preaching good here? Yes, you and I should always, we should live in a mode of thanksgiving. The Bible says, giving thanks always and for all things unto the Father in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. No matter where you are, right. thank you should be your response. No matter what you go through, no matter what you reject it, no matter what you go through with degradation, your response should always be thank you if you have a grateful heart that God saved you. If you have gratitude in your heart, in the midst of your trouble, you'll be able to open your mouth. You don't have to wait till this day. You'll wake up every morning and say, Lord, I thank you that I'm still alive. I thank you that somebody cares about me. I thank you that I have food on my table. I thank you I have something to drive. I thank you for this experience because I have a 
praise the Lord. I'm not going to preach sometimes. We just got to get, see, Pastor, uh, you know, we, we, we grew up in mothers who grew up in church and, and they taught us about, about gratitude. I remember when you preach, you talk about good parenting. Because my mother always made me understand, say, listen here, boy, people don't never have to do nothing for you. Well, I know some people feel like they're entitled just because they shake like a Coke bottle or they hell in the Lord. They feel like they're entitled to say, think some boys say, yeah, man. They're just going to talk to you. Yeah, but my mother told me that. Nobody never really have to do anything for him. And very seldom do they do anything for you except talk. But when they do, come on now. You should think it's not robbery to say thank you. Glory to God. Every now and then you have to understand that people don't never have to do. God didn't have to save you. You didn't deserve to be saved. He saved you because he had a purpose for you. We lost the art of good manners. Yeah. Sometimes good manners will take you with gifts and talents can't take you. Sometimes good manners will take you. Listen, honor is the seat of access. Who you honor, you have access to. Yes. And if you don't have good manners, you don't have access to anybody. Yeah. We have lost touch with good manners. Good morning. How are you? Good afternoon. Thank you. How you feeling? When the better that children get lost with this? All they want to do is be on computers and play them crazy games. Let me get back to the world. Let me get back to the world. But you match. We don't talk about that no more. People remember you when you're at your match. And when you're in trouble and you need them. They remember that you said good morning. They remember that you said yes, sir. They remember that you said yes, ma'am.
Hallelujah. 